McCracken. Looking to erase the disappointment of the 1998 finish for his club side, Parramatta. Stradley will run right to left. And Russell Smith, the British referee, he had charge at North Harbour. And there's the kickoff. Second test. 78th test match. Was there a mistake in goal? If there was, it was allowed to go. Ridge. Pummeled into the ground by Tallis. Big hit. Now Vangana. Three green and gold jerseys hit him simultaneously. Pongia. There's another good tackle. Down low from Darren Britt. Kearney. Two of them take him. Langer was in it. Webke, Jason Smith. They've made it out to the 30. Very physical start from the Australians. Lockyer. Had a dismal test match in the first. And he's lost the ball. And it's a penalty. One of the Kiwis trampled back across Lockyer. I think it might have been. I was about to say McCracken, but it wasn't McCracken. It was this fellow, Logan Swan. Penalty deserving. A tap on Australia's 40-metre line, reaching the halfway through Webke. John's in nine. Darren Britt taken away by three of the Kiwis. Pongia leading in defence with Eru. Dallas, Clive Churchill medalist, John's to the right, a sea of Broncos faces around him, Langer's kick is well judged, Barnett has made a mistake in goal, went backwards, and Saylor takes him away for a line drop out to get us going again. Beautifully placed kick there from Alan Langer, that's no surprise, and a good tactic early in a test match. Turning them around before the last tackle, all of a sudden the defence won't be coming up as quickly. Sean Hoppy, normally as safe as any winger in the game, just came up with a little fumble, but he recovered well. And Wendell Saylor come in to claim. In fact, it's Richie Barnett. Ridge. Taking his time. Just regaining their composure. Taken on the feet now. Darren oh, Britt, I think, was in front of Webke. It's a penalty to the Kiwis, and rightly so. He's called that brilliantly, the ref. Yeah, from way back, he must have got a call from his touch judge, but no doubt about it, it was let go by Lockyer. And you can see there Darren Britt in front of Shane Webke. The two props have uh, messed that one up. It had been a nervous start by the Kiwis, a couple of fumbles, a penalty given away, but now uh, in good field position. 32 metres away from the Australian line. The tap to be taken by Eru. Through Jones, finding Pongia, getting the right knee up high as he confronts the defence. Just outside the 30, they come down the blind. Jones and Vunganar. One of the Australians, Renoff, came spewing away from the tackle. He mistimed it completely. And now Russell Smith is about to pack a scrum down. Yeah, he's got a play the ball infringement and knock on which won't please the Kiwis one little bit, it was only the third tackle and they were well on the attack, the ball popped out backwards, picked up this time by Sean Hoppy the referee has opted to pull that one up it's going to be very interesting to see what role Andrew Johns plays in the attack for Australia you almost think it's a waste for him to spend all his time at dummy half and already surprised that Wayne Bennett the coach has opted for him to not take on the goal kicking duties, Darren Lockyer to undertake that responsibility. This is Robbie Kearns. Played in the Super League test. But as far as for the Kangaroos, he's one of the players on debut. Jason Smith. Russell Smith, the referee, was guilty of a shallow 10 in New Zealand. I must say that last scrum that was Australia scrum he turned a blind eye to the five metres required behind the last row of feet. Ridge 
on a circling run put down by Saylor 38 meters away from their own line now with Kevin Iro playing it back to Barnett and a penalty no he's lost it just to be careful with these international referees they throw their arms around willy-nilly sometimes you can be mistaken for what is a knock-on rather than a penalty but both sides guilty of some handling mistakes and Australia gets a very good chance here Walters drifting across the park Lockyer got a high ball Rinoff puts on some pace pressure is tackled just inside the 30 meter line Kiwis end of the ground no score on the board Robbie Kearns from the Melbourne Storm is put down 22 meters out Johns runs blind goes back to the middle Walters gets an offload to Lockyer Lockyer goes across and then picks up the the lock forward Jason Smith then off the hands of Langer went backwards to Lockyer Lockyer is put away eventually by Stephen Kearney Johns for Webke who's going to take it where it has to go straight up the middle and hard Johns then another knock and on another the this is incredible. Another knock on, and Paul, maybe the showers haven't helped. Obviously, the ball is a little bit greasy. That they're, they're tackling very hard, very forcefully, and it's forcing the ball loose. Is there a hand in that one? Well, you can see Stephen Kearney's hand. It's all over the place there. That player there, Robbie Paul, he was injured making a tackle uh, about three tackles ago, carrying his left shoulder at the moment. So right in front of the uprights, 10 metres away from their own line. And the Kiwis with Kevin Ira. Pulled down by Darren Smith. Robbie Paul leaving the field as Barnett only picks up two metres before he's crunched by Darren Smith. And Gene Namu coming into the action. There's a swan, the back rower, to the 30 metre line. Eero takes them down the blind with Kearney's run. Ending on the 40 metre line. Webke in defence, prominent with Jason Smith and another run from the dummy half position by Eru. He takes it to the halfway line almost and now for Stacey Jones who puts the kick down and bouncing towards the in touch in goal. So back for the 20 metre restart for the Australians. Namu is on and Paul is off. Walters through to Renoff now as Australia work it out and he's lost the ball well it doesn't matter whether